and there were three large gravity amplifiers. These devices looked like about a two foot diameter, four foot long piece of pipe hanging by a smaller piece of pipe from the level above and they can be independently positioned uh, and that's what, what emits the gravitational waves that propel the craft. The second level was the only other level that I was on. It was the main level uh, that contained the reactor where the seating was, the gravity amplifiers themselves, though we also called the devices that hung down on the lower level the gravity amplifiers because they were really one and the same. They were probably the waveguides or horns if you want to relate that to microwaves. Um, it would be extremely inconvenient for a human pilot. Humans really can't even function in there the, because of the ceiling clearance. Uh, the seats were so tiny. Uh, it was obviously made for a creature much smaller than a human. It produces a gravity wave, which is similar to the gravity wave that the Earth produces. However, the craft phase shifts the wave. In other words, it, it turns the wave not really in an opposite polarity, but something to that effect, where it will work against the natural gravity wave of the Earth, and it produces a lift in, in that effect. Well, the craft generates its own gravitational field. Being inside that field essentially doesn't shield you, but it, essentially you're in <laughs> and this is a, a terrible way to say it, almost in a different realm, because you're, you're now influenced only the, by that gravitational field. For instance, people wonder how a craft like this can make a turn at such high speed, a 90 degree turn, when they would imagine people slamming up against the wall or something to that effect. Well, that, that really wouldn't happen. Inertia would have no effect. Uh, you're, you're in a distortion. And don't forget that gravity distorts time and space, so really nothing is going to influence you while you're in there. There are three amplifiers. The craft can operate on a single one, can lift off the ground. The way in which it's propelled are two different ways. There's what they call Omicron configuration, where the craft is using one generator. Uh, or a delta configuration, where it's utilizing all three. Delta configuration would be for space travel. Essentially, the craft will tilt up on its side, as opposed to a science fiction movie where you see a flying saucer moving around. The craft will tilt up on its side, focus the three gravity generators to a single point, and move through space that way. Moving around a source of gravity is a problem to a disk because it's interference, essentially. So what they do is they work with that interference to their benefit. They'll use one gravity generator to lift the craft off the ground. And as opposed to what we're used to, for instance, a plane, once it's in the air, we envision thrust or some force coming out the back of it to push it forward. The crafts work completely opposite of that. What they do is once they're hovering in the air, they'll swing the gravity, two remaining gravity generators up in front of them and create a distortion, essentially a downhill. And the craft rolls downhill for infinity. It's always chasing a little distortion. That's why they look goofy when they fly around at low speed because they're essentially, and any time you run over, you know, the gravity field around the Earth is not completely constant and stable depending on the minerals and density of the Earth underneath it the gravity will vary somewhat and you will get odd movements of the craft. So its low speed mode is, is kind of unstable for the most part. I only witnessed one test flight up close officially. Uh, that I was in, just inside the hangar. Uh, the test was going off probably, you know, uh, just as the sun was going down. And it was a, a low performance test. I believe there were uh, some pilots or test pilots in the craft. The craft must have been retrofitted to fit them because the seating arrangements were really not accommodating. Um, they were in radio communication with the craft. The craft lifted off the ground, uh, virtually noiseless, other than a small corona discharge on the bottom of the craft, indicating the presence of high voltage. Uh, that dissipated. 
at about 30 feet, and it stood there completely silently and moved over to the left and to the right and sat back down. That was the entire uh, test. However, that was an extremely impressive test. Uh, maybe to someone that really knows little about science or anything, that, that wouldn't be a whole lot, but you have to realize this craft was about 52 feet in diameter. I don't know exactly how much it weighed, but it weighed a lot. And uh, this was quite, quite a scientific feat, to lift something completely silently, under control, and uh, you know, perform a maneuver like that. The craft itself was, uh, I assume it was metal. It was cold to the touch, that's why I say it was metal. But it was a uh, brushed aluminum, actually just an unfinished stainless steel, not shiny uh, finish to it. Had no seams, it was as if it was injection molded from one giant die. I was completely amazed. I, gravity is something difficult to explain because it's something that we essentially don't understand. It's just something that we can observe. Not much is really known about gravity. Uh, there are many theories about it, but they are just mainly theories. There's theories of gravitons, which allege that there, these are these subatomic particles that, that act like an attractive force like gravity that exchange between two pieces of matter. There is also a theory that gravity is uh, a form of wave, an electromagnetic wave. Uh, but basically, gravity is a force. It's, uh, it, it's the attraction. It, well, it's the inherent property of matter to have gravity, a mutual attraction for each other. And that's it, it's basically all that we really know. Modern science, current science right now, identifies one gravity. It's one force in nature. Uh, apparently, through research at S4 or information gained from one of the crafts they were researching there, uh, it, it appears that there are two different forms of gravity. One form works on an atomic scale on subatomic particles, holding pieces of matter, holding atoms themselves together. Uh, another works on a larger scale, the scale we're most, most familiar with, uh, holding planets in orbit, holding ourselves to the ground, things of that sort. Because it produces a gravitational field, it, I, I wouldn't say the craft is invisible during the day. However, if you're under the craft, because of the way the gravity is being used, gravity bends time and space and it, it bends light. If you are looking underneath the craft or from certain vantage points, you will actually see what's above the craft. It's, a, it's really a trick of the way light bends under the influence of gravity. For instance, we can see stars that are behind the sun, that are blocked from our view by the sun. The reason we can see them is because the sun is a tremendous gravitational field and it's bending the light around it where we can see the star. Space-time and gravity are all essentially interrelated. They all act on one another. Gravity bends space. Gravity also distorts time. When you vary one, you essentially vary the other two. Uh, if you, as an example, if you have a massive body, say a planet or, or something that's making a lot of gravity, producing a lot of gravitational waves, if you will, um, it distorts space. It bends space to it. It also slows down time. These things aren't theories. We know them to be true. Uh, we cannot artificially create this because we can't create gravity. Uh, but this is how they're all interrelated. How are vast distances of space traveled by amplifying a gravitational field? Well, because space-time and gravity are all interrelated, if you could produce gravity artificially, an extremely intense field of gravity, what you could do is actually distort the distance between two objects and make it shorter. Not just distorting the distance, but now you're also decreasing the time, the actual time between the two places. So you're not traveling in a linear mode like flying a spacecraft from point A to point B. You're, you've actually modified the time and the space that you travel in. So you're now traversing a huge amount of distance with little time, and actually with traveling little distance. As crazy as it seems, that, that's what's going on.